The African American legend series highlights the accomplishments of blacks in areas as varied as politics, sports, music, business, literature, and the arts. We will explore how African Americans have succeeded in areas where they had been previously excluded because of segregation, racism, and lack of opportunity. I'm your host, Dr. Roscoe C. Brown, Jr., and with us today is Vosa Rivers, executive producer of the New Heritage Repertory Group. Glad to have you with us today, Vosa. Uh, I'm glad to be here and be your guest again, once well, again. You, you're part of the artistic stream that keeps our community going, and this New Heritage Repertory Group is the unit that you use to pull this together. So could you tell us about how it got started, you know, Roger and some of the founders, yes, and yes. what you're trying to do with that. The New Heritage Theater Group was founded in 1964 by a local uh, artist by the name of Roger Furman. Roger Furman was a playwright, a director. Mm -hmm. uh, he was a set designer. He was a member of the American Negro Theater, founded in 1940 in the uh, uh, the basement of 135th Street Library, the County Cullen Branch. And Roger was a genius. Yes, he was. Uh, for me, meeting him was important. But let me just say, American Negro Theater, young people, 18 and 19, all involved in a theater founded by Abe Hill and mm -hmm. uh, Fred O'Neill. Mm -hmm. Ozzie Davis, Ruby D, Harry Belafonte, uh, Sidney Portier, Clarice Taylor, Gertrude Jeanette, all came out of that group, and they went on, and as we know, they changed the face of black theater. Roger, in 1964, said, I want to start a theater company based on that model. Mm -hmm. I was one of those people that he touched, uh, so I'm one of the founding members. We're celebrating 45 years, and... Everything that I am and everything that I do today is because of that meeting I had with Roger who encouraged me to take on the behind the scenes aspects of what makes theater run and what makes theater work. He, and was, he was a pers very persuasive individual. Very, he he was very, so very, persistent about yes. bringing you in encouraging you to come to the theater, yes. talking about the opportunities of the theater. He, he really was a genius, as I said. I walked in his shadows for 20 years. Mm -hmm. and so you know. <laughs> I know. I really know. So I was very, very fortunate because after six years, he touched me and said he wanted to work more closely with me and gave me administrative responsibilities mm -hmm. that really uh, sharpened my skills in that area. And they would run plays. I meant, yeah. remember going to that theater was on... Yeah. Uh, uh, Madison Avenue. On right, 35 20th. East 125th Street and, uh, over the uh, Celebrity oh, Club. That's where it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we'd we're... go there to watch those plays, that's and they're right. very deep plays. And very many of them went place. to Broadway. Well, not Broadway, but they toured. Yeah, toured. Because mm -hmm. at that time, we, we, were, we still weren't uh, uh, seeing Acceptable. that transfer of our work done, but, but for the community. And that's where Roger, <clears throat> let me just say this, uh, what a lot of people don't know is that before Roger created his theater company, he was encouraged to go downtown and create a theater group. Mm -hmm. And he said, and, they, and the funders told him that if he was downtown, he could get more funding, et cetera. His commitment was to Harlem was, was just, just uh, a, 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 a goal of his that he wanted to present professional quality theater at affordable prices in for the Harlem. community in Harlem. And that's where he stayed and the work that we did uh, uh, resonates still today. Mm -hmm. The Long Black Block, uh, Monsieur Baptiste de mm -hmm. Conman. Roger wrote a lot of the plays mm -hmm. and he directed them and he built the sets and the costumes and so all of those plays still resonate today. Mm -hmm. Now what does the group do today? Today, in 1997, Jamal Joseph joined me. Jamal Joseph, another Harlemite, he's a filmmaker, director, uh, uh, very much in the Renaissance spirit of Roger Furman, came on board to work closely with me and then reshaping what Roger had done. Roger died in 1983. I took over the theater at that time. 1997, <clears throat> Jamal comes on board and then he expands the footprint from just a theater to a film company, and where do we keep the legacy with our kids? So we created Impact Repertory Theater, uh, a group of young people 
where we could pass on our history and culture and our technique and New Heritage Films, which was now the natural extension of the theater, would be to document what you do. And so we created a documentary film division called uh, 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 New Heritage Films. Mm -hmm. And that's where we are today with these three divisions, uh, the theater, film, and uh, Impact Youth Group. Now, where do you show your films or where do you show your documentaries? Well, our documentaries have started out at, uh, at screening at the Schomburg Center, uh, the theater at Riverside Church, the Museum of the City of New York, and then two years ago it, it traveled to Japan uh, for a festival there. What, <clears throat> what we have done documentary-wise is we, we, we documented the 95th anniversary of the NAACP. We did the 110th anniversary of the Greater Harlem Chamber of Commerce. We documented Percy Sutton's life uh, that we showed a few years ago. We have taken it upon ourselves to capture our institutions and those individuals who've made inroads. We've done a film on the life of Langston Hughes that's still shown uh, that we did back in uh, 2002 that still gets screening today on major, on major uh, uh, networks. So again, that's our goal with the uh, film division. And we look for local filmmakers who live and work or are inspired by the Harlem of, to, of yesterday, mm -hmm. today, and tomorrow. And we have two film schools in Harlem. Columbia University and City College. So we also work with a lot of their film students and encourage them to do films about this beloved community called Harlem. Now your funding comes from a variety of sources, public sources, private sources, Council of the Arts, etc. Yes. Uh, how do you raise your money? Well, we raise it in a number of ways. Uh, we get what we call institutional funding through the New York State Council of the Arts mm -hmm. and the De uh, New York City Department of Cultural Affairs. The other funds, uh, Jamal and I are very enterprising, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and we like to earn money for the group the old-fashioned way. For example, Impact does more than 50 shows a year. Mm -hmm. And we do a lot of free shows, but there are also uh, shows where we generate earned income. People actually hire, uh, let's say they're doing something at the Pier Hotel, they actually hire Impact to perform, and that's another source. So we look at earned income, government support, and private donations. Now, Impact, tell us a little bit more about Impact. What does it do? Where does it operate? How does it operate? Impact is our youth division uh, for people, young people ages 12 to 19. It is a rites of passage program, it is an arts and leadership program, and what I mean by rites of passage, you audition for impact. We don't care what your particular interest in, but we have a process because we want to uh, interview you and, and, and see what kind of <clears throat> skills that you have. We've never turned away anyone. That's right. Everybody has a skill. Everyone has a skill. And what we do is we, we, we challenge our young people, but before they can become an impact member, they must go through boot camp, which is 12 weeks. And then during boot camp, they get a manual this thick. And in that manual are old school values, grandma and grandpa values. Don't take what don't belong to you. Uh, 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 treat others as you would like them to treat. I mean the whole lexicon of grandma and grandpa values that a lot of us grew up on. In addition to that, there's a whole historical piece so that they would understand what preceded them and the foundation and who those individuals are. Impact's goal is to take all sorts of topical issues, impacting not only peer-to-peer -peer issues, but global issues. Mm -hmm. So you can talk about the, the, the collapse of the world economy. They take that, they go into a lab, uh, we have instructors working with them, and they dissect uh, all of the issues. Then they come up with creative writing, songs, uh, poems, uh, choreography, music, because they go module for module after they take on a subject. And that at the end of maybe a four-week period, a new uh, creative piece is created, mm -hmm. and, and that is added to their repertoire. So again, there's more than a 1,000 young people uh, in the last 12 years. Where, where do you do this physically? 
Well, we have the administrative offices on 138th Street, right on Strivers Row, but Columbia University for the last few years have provided a home for us at 110th Street and, and uh, Broadway. Mm -hmm. uh, they have a, a, a facility there called The School. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a private school, and they turn over that building to us each Saturday for eight hours, mm -hmm. and that's another commitment. Mm -hmm. Impact is serious, so it's an eight-hour commitment mm -hmm. every Saturday, and and a part of that is is that we do a minimum of fifty shows a year. Now, if anyone in the audience wants to join Impact, how do they get in touch with you? The number for Impact is two one two nine two six four five one six, and Deirdre. Uh, uh, her, uh, Deatrice, I'm sorry, Deatrice, D-I-E-T-R-I-C-E, -I -E, is the uh, associate producer for Impact. So Impact, again, is 212-926-4516. And we also have a website, impactreptheater.org. Uh, now, if someone in the audience says, look, this is something I want my kid to do, they just call this number and you invite them in? And yes. Do, what about the... Uh, uh, the fact that they have to audition. Like I said before, we want to make sure that there are no behavioral problems. Good. But mm -hmm. other than that, we will accept them. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a free program. Mm -hmm. uh, on Saturdays, because they stay with us eight hours, we give them a, a nice meal because in some instances, as we checked out uh, some of the kids, they don't have a chance to get a good meal with a family setting mm -hmm. uh, anymore. Those kinds of values are gone. So like I said, what we try to do, especially under Jamal's uh, watchful eye, is to make sure that our young people uh, know that they have a family. Mm -hmm. It's a safe space for them. Well, who are the instructors? Now, because we're 12 years old, a lot of the members who were students in IMPACT are now the instructors. Mm -hmm. So that's the beauty of it. It's a program run by the members themselves. So when I mentioned Deatrice, Deatrice was one of the first members. She was 15 at the time, and now 12 years later, she's 27. Mm -hmm. But she runs it. And, and, and all throughout Impact, you will see that our young people who've been in the program 10, 12 years are running the program. And one of the successes is that uh, one of the Impact groups appeared at the Academy Awards to yes. receive an Oscar for a, a, a musical production that they had done in conjunction with a film. Yes. The film was called August Rush. It came out, uh, the film was shot in 2007. Uh, Robin Williams was in that film. Um, the director of the film was looking for uh, uh, actors to be a part of the film. And it was suggested that he come to one of our rehearsals. He was so moved when he opened the doors to see these kids, he said, I want all of them. I want the whole group. And whatever they're singing, I want to see if it's possible that that could be a part of what we're doing. So uh, we went back. Uh, the whole impact group was accepted. We wrote this original song, Raise It Up. Uh, that song was nominated for an Academy Award. Uh, we were then invited to perform that song before one billion people, um, and, um, and, and what an experience for, for our young people. So uh, that was in 2008 when the uh, awards. This year, we, the, the soundtrack was nominated for a Grammy. Mm -hmm. So again, our, our young now, people... Now, what do you get when you get these nominated? Do you get more money as a result of publicity? Do you get a better ego stroke? What do the kids really get from this? Well, when we were out in Los Angeles, um, the, uh, one of the news reporters said to ask one of our kids, now that you have been here for a few days, uh, th I mean, this must be, this will change your life. What, what has it been like for you? And one of our students said, well, for me, this is the first time I've been able to sleep on a bed. Mm -hmm. And I'm so excited to be able to sleep on a bed with clean sheets every night. Mm -hmm. it, is the, it is the journey of not being uh, 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 impressed with glitz and glamour. It is to continue the work. And that's what we, 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 we de-emphasize uh, 
uh, to our young people that aspect of it because that's a fleeting moment. And what we want to do is make them better citizens and better ambassadors for our arts and culture. And yes, they can always remember that memorable uh, opportunity be on, on a world stage, but it's really about them being ambassadors for the community. Do many of the students go to college? Yes, once? right now uh, we, have, um, we have a very high uh, uh, rate of, of our students in college now, which is really making us feel very good. And they go from local uh, city uh, colleges to uh, some of the most prestigious colleges, Brown University, Yale University. Uh, we now have a student who's in London uh, 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 studying. And again, this is all through being inspired by us. So when you join Impact and you go through your process of being accepted, the first thing that we ask you is, what college are you interested in going to? And if you don't have a college, then part of your introduction into Impact is that you must read up on college. But before you get out of boot camp, you would have selected a college and a major. Now, this is a beautiful story you're telling about New Heritage and Impact. How did you get motivated to do this as a part of your life's work? For me, um, it was one of those moments. I, 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 I'm, I was, um, people are hard to believe, I was very bashful. I was 18 years old. I decided to take a public speaking course at the local Y. WCA, it was on 103rd, 125th Street next to, in fact, it's the building now where Percy Sutton it's is. It's office, right. It, where his office is, right next to the post office on 125th Street. Which is now the Percy Sutton post office. Yes, that's right. It's so history is it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. That evening in the first class, there was a guest speaker, and the speaker was Roger Furman. Uh -huh. And he wanted to talk about the American Negro Theater and its significance, and then do a number of uh, 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 short uh, monologues to show us the power of the spoken word. Mm -hmm. And then that evening, he also talked about starting a theater company. And that gratuitous moment changed my life. Theater was not a part of my life. I, I didn't I didn't aspire to be in the theater or anything, but it definitely changed my life. Did you want to be an actor? No. No. I was real clear. So what did you want to do? What, what was your role? I wanted to be able, it was the height of, it was 1964. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be prepared uh, uh, because there was a lot of ferment in the streets during that time. And I always said, well, suppose someone walks up to me with a microphone and asks, well, what do you think about what's happening? Mm -hmm. I wanted to be articulate about mm -hmm. what it was I was feeling. And so that was my motivation for joining uh, 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 and taking a public speaking class at that time. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be a better uh, communicator. Well, you certainly have become an excellent communicator and also a great businessman and one who can mobilize people. So one of the things I want to ask is, how do you, New Repertory Impact, work with the other black theater and cultural groups, the Harlem School of the Arts, the Negro Ensemble Company, the Black Spectrum Theater, the Billie Holiday Theater? You know, I'm covering all the of barrels course. here. How so, do you work together? <clears throat> a number of years ago, we, uh, the black theater groups that have 30 or more years, uh, uh, and you name some of them, Billy Holiday Theater, Black Spectrum Theater, New Federal Theater, National Black Theater, Impact, the Hadley Players, the Negro Ensemble Company, and some Latin theaters, mm -hmm. Thalia Theater, Intar, uh, Saya. We all got together and went to Ozzie Davis and said, we receive city funding but we have never felt that the amount of work that we contribute to our communities has been acknowledged in a way that, uh, that benefits us for the value that we put into what we do. There are other theater companies with the same age, et cetera, and they are, <coughs> excuse me, they receive much more money, uh, funding from the city. Ozzie Davis, Charles Barron, and other elected officials uh, went to the city council and we created something called the Coalition of Theaters of Color with the th groups that we just mentioned. And, uh, and through that coalition, we were able to get 
a special grant of $800,000 to keep our theaters going. That commitment has been uh, ongoing now for the last three years. I know that the, uh, the budget now is in crisis. Uh, we don't know if it will continue, but what it has done is it has validated us in ways that it didn't before. There is an acknowledgement that if we don't get the support that we should, our institutions will die. So as we look around, as we look at the, at the, uh, uh, at the, uh, at the cultural scene in Harlem, we know that there is the uh, Dance Theater of Harlem, 40 years. Harlem School of the Arts, 45 years. Jazzmobile, 45 years. Uh, Frank Silvera's Writer's Workshop, 37 years, etc. These institutions will not be able to exist with what's happening now in terms of the funding uh, patterns. So it has been my job and, and the job of all of the leaders of these institutions to work closer together. So in 2001, I started uh, spearheading something called the Harlem Arts Alliance with 12 mm -hmm. members and some of the groups that we mentioned were founding members of the Harlem Arts Alliance. Uh, today, we now have almost 800 members Mm -hmm. uh, so they're not-for-profits and for-profits uh, uh, organizations. They are uh, colleges and universities, schools, directors, choreographers, filmmakers, you name it. Not only are we representing the institutions that are in our community, but we're also representing institutions that are outside of our community that market and promote our culture. Mm -hmm. So, for example, there's Lincoln Center and they do a series of events and activities. Uh, they did August Wilson's last play, for example. But each and every time they, rep they, they, they produce work by black writers or they use black actors, it assists us in the continuation and the networking of those who are in the trenches to know that there's an opportunity for them to take their craft elsewhere. And so my job as the chairman of the Harlem Arts Alliance is to facilitate those opportunities and also to be a voice in terms of arts advocacy. So I go to Albany often, I speak at the city council, and it's just very important that we as a group, as a community, that we're talking and working together. It reminds me of the Harlem Renaissance. Well, what about the residents of Harlem, the people who benefit from this? Shouldn't they be contributing financially as well as their energy to this? I know many don't have the resources, but many people do have the resources. And in a sense, we don't support the arts as well as we should. Uh, Roscoe, this is, a, this is a 50, 60 year old conversation. Because mm -hmm. if, Oz, if Ruby Dee was here right now, yeah. <laughs> she would tell you the same story or with the American Negro Theater. Mm -hmm. Our job is to uh, 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 be a reflection of the community in which we live in, and I think all of us have done that and we've added to the cultural landscape. It is very, very difficult to get the kind of support that we feel that we need because the list of priorities of residents in the community puts culture at the bottom of its priorities, mm -hmm. and that is very difficult. Where I see a glimmer of hope is the work that we're doing in the schools by working with facilitators going into the schools and providing cultural enrichment programs uh, for young people. Uh, there are people my age, a little younger, who still find it very important to support the arts, and they do that. But there is an ever-growing and changing population in the community now that, uh, that uh, uh, find their sustenance for arts and culture outside of the community as opposed to in the community. Mm -hmm. They are residents in the community, but they have still uh, uh, taken on uh, the habits of saying, well, it's better because it's downtown. And it is a wealth of, of real, really exciting talent that still percolates. Well, that gives me the, to the old marketing principle. The more you talk about what you do, the more people will identify with it. Yes. What kind of marketing do you do? We... Um, <clears throat> Our marketing is mostly grassroots. Yes, we do advertise black. The black press is extremely mm -hmm. important for us. Black radio is important to us. But as the demographics change, even for black radio, where they try to get young on demos, it, 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 it puts 
our agenda again on the side, mm. black press has been great for us. Mm -hmm. That's been a steady, uh, a steady supporter of the arts in numerous ways. Um, shows like yours help. Mm -hmm. uh, hundreds of people, hundreds of thousands of people will see your show. Now let me yes. ask, as we come to the close, yes. your Dwyer Arts Project. Tell yes. us a little about that. Well, the Dwyer Cultural Center is another 20-year journey that I've been involved with. Uh, International Communications Association, another not-for-profit group, 20 years ago got involved in an abandoned warehouse, 90,000 square feet of space on 123rd Street in St. Nicholas Avenue, and we were very, uh, uh, very ambitious and said that if we ever got a building like that, we would make it uh, uh, affordable uh, uh, art uh, 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 residence and workspace for artists, etc. And it was a great dream, but we never built anything. We never developed anything, and we had no, we were artists. But you and Cliff Frazier did pull it together. Cliff Frazier, Adamola, and myself, 20 years later, uh, we created a, a gym of a building, uh, 51 residential condo units, and at the lower level of the building, we created this 7,500 square foot cultural center. It's the newest cultural center in Harlem in the last 20 years, and uh, we have a theater, uh, we have an art gallery, we have rehearsal spaces, we have incubator office spaces, and it percolates every day from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday and 1 to 5 on Saturday with a lot of programming and a lot of it's free. Today on African American Legends, we've been talking with the legendary Boza Rivers, New Heritage Repertory Group, talking about the future of the arts and theater in our community. Thanks for being with us today, Boza. Thank you. Thank you.